Thank you on Zoom. Welcome to our friends in South Africa and amen. from the nations. Welcome. Amen. It's going to be an exciting and an awesome night tonight. Yes, amen. amen. We are all fired up already. Do you want to say hi? Yeah. Hallelujah. Been trained well. Yeah, they've been trained well. I want to just welcome you in the name of Jesus Christ. And I really know that tonight God has really got a word of the Lord for you. And the Lord is busy setting us up to display His illustrious work through our lives to the people out there that's been saying, where's your God? I believe we are in this season that the Lord says, I want to use everyone in this room to display my power through them. And I know this is the season we, we, we said the last two, three weeks that we said that is an hour where God is coming and is visiting people house to house to house and I was so excited this week and you all know about some of the the personal um, visitations that we shared that some of our congregation members had but this week specifically um, one of our younger ones um, Sarah had a vision of an angel just outside of the house and it was so real and she actually drew me a picture and said Tani Kari Auntie Kari it was just so incredible because I saw this angel with a trumpet in front of its mouth and the angel was just saying it's time for an awakening it is time for an awakening so I want to say to you God is coming and he's visiting young ones old ones bold yes. ones yes. and feisty ones God is saying my presence and my power will be revealed and what I want to do in this hour not only in our nation but also in the lives of families to bring forth a transformation so that his power can be seen in places and in families where there's always been difficulty I truly believe we are in this hour that the Lord says I want to come to every household and I want to visit them and I want to bring transformation and I want to change things so that it can start looking according to heaven's timeline Amen. of what heaven Amen. has said over families. Amen. And Amen. don't you want to add Amen. to that? Yeah, I just want to say the Lord is bringing a divine convergence between your natural situation and what the, what the prophetic word over your life was, Amen. what the Lord Amen. was saying. Your prophetic destiny. So there is a divine gap. God is closing that gap at the moment mm. and is doing something supernatural. Jesus. So I'm, I'm very excited yes. without Amen. sharing too much. Yes. You have to tune, keep to tuning in to hear the full see, word. I, I have to just do this because otherwise he shares my prophetic word, you see. But um, fortunately, we love one another. And in love, I can just, you know, stamp on his toes and say, shh, not now. Okay, but anyway, Holy Spirit, come back. Holy Spirit, come back. <laughs> okay, join us in worship and thereafter the word. Stay Amen. tuned. Amen. Let's worship and fearlessly Lord Father we, we push fear aside we push every restraint aside and we say Father we cry out and we grab Father your mercy mercy for our shortcomings Father grace Father grace unmerited favor undeserved favor Father in the name of Jesus we receive it tonight from you we receive it tonight Father your grace and your mercy to break us out and to break us through the mercy that triumphs over judgment Lord that you break Father the penalty of any judgment we're supposed to carry that your grace a special grace be released tonight to break us out and to break us free from every place of confinement and restriction i thank you father that you're breaking the shackles tonight you are breaking the ropes you are breaking the chains and father i thank you lord as we have praised you as we have worshiped you lord that you come father and just come and move amongst us tonight and lord that you come and loosen the bonds and father bring shifts and changes so that we can have movement and movement momentum in the name of Jesus father we trust you for shifts and changes over our life tonight in the name of Jesus by faith and we honor you father we honor you for this atmosphere we thank you father for your angelic presence in this place yes, Lord. thank you for your fire and your glory in this place Lord in the name of Jesus amen and amen amen, amen. thank you Jesus um, Thank you. Come. Uh, so I really felt I needed to share a lesson that God taught me the past two weeks regarding pride, um, especially as we're moving into a season where promises will get fulfilled and everything. Um, that we should never become prideful and think we did it on our strength, and and especially never forget the second part of the scripture. So it's not I can do all things; it's I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. It's not we are con more than conquerors, it's we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Thank you. Thank you. 
So I um, felt my f a few months back. I um, I got myself stuck in a in a demonic cycle or a sinful cycle um, that I couldn't get out of. And I was like, Jesus, what's going on? I I can't get free. I'm praying. I'm praying, but nothing's happening. And I I got help, and that didn't help. And um, <laughs> although I appreciate the help, um, <laughs> but that didn't help. And so. I went to one of my friends and I just said, just pray for me. And he, he did a simple prayer just saying, Holy Spirit, just help him. And I went home and I, I started Bible study and the Holy Spirit said to me, pray against this spirit. And as I prayed against this spirit, I felt the lift. And then I went to bed and I got woken up by Jesus doing this. And I didn't realize what was really happening to me. And um, I... I went to sleep again and I got an amazing dream about my calling and all that. And since I woken up that morning, it was all gone. It didn't happen again. And the cycle was broken. And I started a study on one Thessalonians and two Thessalonians. And um, the, I, I came across a scripture where the Holy Spirit um, said to me, Vanna, this is what happened to you. And it says in two Thessalonians 2 verse 8, it says, And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord Jesus will overthrow with the breath of his mouth. And so the reason why I'm telling you this is that, that Jesus will enter your room and breathe over you. And when there's if any lawless cycle, that he will breathe, blow it out of you in Jesus' name. And then the, the second part that the Holy Spirit said, I must, I must say, is that the church has been taking some scripture out of context. And um, with regards to money and um, rich and all that stuff and they they've been using the scripture that um, i've become poor so that you can become rich and so the holy spirit led me to to revelation 3 that says um so because you are lukewarm neither hot nor cold i'm about to spit you out of my mouth you say i am rich uh, i have required wealth and do not need it a thing um but you you do not realize the deception part that you are wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. And I counsel you to um, come and buy gold refined by fire so that you can become rich. And I think that we have a misconception of what rich really means. It means our character must be refined and we must go through the sufferings in order to become mature and rich in the faith. And um, because the word also says that, that God is rich in mercy, and it's that type of riches that God is talking about. By this, I'm not saying God doesn't want you to have money, but we take it out of proportion sometimes. So, and it's about the heart. What's the heart seeking? And then I heard the Holy Spirit say that, do not, church, do not use my cross to pursue your selfish ambitions and pursue mammon. Because we can either serve God or mammon. And, I, and then after the Holy Spirit said this to me, I came into, in the, to, I got a call while I was messaging one of my friends that's a pastor at the church. And I said to him, you have everything that you want or that any young man wants. You have, a, you have a godly wife, you have a son, all that stuff. But when I look at you in the spirit, it looks different. And, and he poured out, he said, yeah, but he's pursuing money and, and he's not satisfied. So you have everything to be thankful for, but it's not satisfied at all. And, and that, is a, that is a deception in itself. And um, then the last one is I had a dream. And um, I heard the father say that um, Vanner, the, the rapture is almost, but I waited for my children to repent. And so I just pray over you that, that you will truly repent and that the Holy Spirit will lead you into true repentance in Jesus' name. Amen. Good evening. Um, I, for a couple of weeks now, the Lord has been dealing with me about having go-to scriptures for situations that may come up in our lives, for challenges that I may face. And, and I just felt the, the leading to share with you guys. In Second, uh, Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13, it says, uh, but we have the same spirit of faith as it was written. Uh, I believe, therefore I speak. So we believe and therefore we speak. And so we need to have these scriptures that we speak, that we speak over ourselves, over our situations. For example, if, if health is a challenge, we need to take the scriptures that, and, and go and search scriptures and have them ready 
so that the day the challenge of health comes, that I don't have to then suddenly gra grab my Bible and s start scratching around and looking or phone the pastor or phone a friend, that I've got the scriptures ready. So because I, and I had the picture of an army. An army has weapons, weapons, defense weapons and, and, and uh, uh, offensive weapons and all sorts of uh, weapons. And those weapons are ready, are made ready so that when they are needed, they are ready. And I just felt the Lord saying to me, and, and, I, and I believe the message is for, uh, for, for not just me, for everyone, that we need to have those, those scriptures on, on the tips of our tongues so that we can speak them and, and declare them and be bold and in declaring what we believe and not what we see. Amen. I just heard um, Numbers 21, and that is where the Israelites went from Mount Aaron, and they went along to the Red Sea um, near Edom, and they start complaining and murmuring against Mo Moses and say, there's no food here, there's no water here, and they say they even detest this miserable food which the Lord miraculously gave to them, that was the manna. And so the Lord then sent venomous snakes, and these snakes start to bite them, and some of them even died. And so they went back to Moses and they said, we've sinned against you and against the Lord. Will you please go and pray for us that the Lord remove these venomous snakes? And what amazes me is that the Lord did not remove these venomous snakes. What the Lord did, he said to Moses, go and make a replica of a snake and put it on a pole. And whenever one of these Israelites that was bitten look to the snakes, they will be healed and they will live. And so um, last year in my workplace, there was a culture survey that we had to complete. And some of the outcome was that the people complained about the, in, the um, remuneration and the long hours that they worked and so forth. And so we managed to give the people an interim increase. And three weeks ago, the company also sent a broadcast out and some people on a certain level will receive a certain amount of money as a once off. And some of my team members called me and they said, is this a phishing mail or because sometimes the company does send out that phishing mails to catch us out. And I said, no, this is for real. You're going to get that. And you, we've got increases shortly and um, just have a thankful heart whenever you complete that survey because the next one is coming out now. And then three weeks ago, I was called in by my new boss that is only two months there, confronting me that there was a complaint lodged against me that I tried to influence some of the people to complete this anonymous survey. And I was like, what, Lord, what is going on here? And then I had to um, came in front of our HR and I had to come in front of an employment equity forum and I was praying to the Lord and I said, Lord, it feels like there's a snake around me. And the Lord said to me, go read Numbers 21. And this is how I got to read the scripture. And then the Lord said to me, but listen to this centuries after that the Lord speak to Moses and at this replica of the snake, he spoke to Nicodemus in John 3 and he said, the same I will be risen on a pole. And that was actually the cross that Jesus referred to. And he said, whoever believed in me will live. And the Lord said, don't look at the circumstances, look to me. And I started in praying in tongues and a boldness came over me. And someone was saying to me, oh, are you, and even mocking me and saying, are you not preaching the gospel? And I was like, Lord, what is this? And then someone came in with a negative report and a boldness came over me. And I said, that's not going to happen because I've already dealt with that in the spirit. And I want to encourage you today. I don't know what snakes are around you, what circumstances are around you. Sometimes the Lord doesn't remove those snakes from us, but we have to get a boldness and we have to stand to all, like uh, Anton is always saying, we get ranking in the spirit and overcoming testimony when we can stand. And then this employment equity forum, came back and they said to me you know what we don't know how they came came to your name because that they, we never mentioned your name and it was no, never nobody in your team so I was just misimplicated and 
sometimes these things happen and we don't understand it and that snake bites us and it even felt to me that I haven't been bitten by a snake but it felt like I'm going to die also being in front of all these forums but we need to do what the Lord is telling us look to him look to him on the cross because he's died for us and that boldness will come over you in Jesus name You excited? Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay, can I try again? Hallelujah. Are we excited? It's the word of the Lord. Not that the others weren't the word of the Lord. But please, guys, you have to work with me. Okay? Because as you work with me, there is faith being released in the atmosphere. But if you all look like... Ugh. I mean, seriously, I'm going to make you stand up and come and stand behind the camera. All right, get yourself ready. And this is really the word of, your, of the Lord for you tonight. Get yourself ready is what the Holy Spirit said to me. Kari, tell my children they need to get themselves ready because I'm about to release fresh oil and a fresh anointing for the next season that they're about to step in. And many of you are saying, Lord, what is this next season? Listen to this. This is what God said. God said to me, this, that season that you've been contending for, the very season, that season is the season where God is saying it's now going to be God's sovereign time clock that will converge with your prophetic destiny. And what that means in plain English, it means that there is a now time set in heaven for you. And that will come together with God's power and God's glory glory and it will collide literally with your prophetic words so that there can be a birthing of the manifestation of God's promises in your life so that there will be evidence there will be evidence of the prophetic word this is the season that you are about to step in isn't that amazing I say Jesus yes there's been many of us that's been contending and saying Lord when 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 God is saying I am getting ready to release the new oil I'm getting ready to release that new mantle I almost want to say it's a fresh anointing that will be able to carry you until the time of the birthing. And God says, that's the now time. I literally saw like a board in heaven that had red circles around it to say, Hilani's now time. This one's now time. I saw the names with the red circle and I said, it is the now time. And when God is releasing the now time, there will be a collusion and a manifestation. And every time we are about to step over into a new timeline, and we all know that we are stepping into this new Jewish year. You all know we're stepping into Rosh Hashanah next week. That is a prophetic timeline. And the Lord says we have to be careful because every time there is a prophetic timeline, what the enemy loves to do is he creates a lot of warfare around us. A lot of warfare. And the Lord said, don't take it personal. We have to have the discernment to know if it's a personal warfare or if it's a corporate warfare. Because when there is a personal warfare going on and we take it personally, and it's actually not a personal thing, but it's corporately, we get sidetracked by what God actually wants to do in our lives. And the purpose of the enemy trying to come um, at us to say to us, this is a personal warfare. What will happen is that many times it will cause a great confusion. It will throw you off course when there's so much warfare. It will slow you down because you can't focus on what you are supposed to focus on because of all the, the hassle that's going on around you, all the warfare. And lastly, listen to this. The Lord says, be careful because when you are busy with warfare, God didn't intend you to, to be involved with. It will break the intimacy with the Father. And this is the aim in this season that the enemy wants to break our intimacy, our ability to run to the Father and jump upon Him. Because it's from a place of intimacy that the Father will reveal His intimate secrets where He will reveal to you the next step. We will give you the revelation that you need in order to progress. But if there's a disconnection, that's why we feel confused. That's why we feel, Lord, where am I? Am I moving forward or am I moving back? That's when there's a disconnection, and this is the very aim of the enemy. And the Holy Spirit said to me, Kari, tell my children, now is the time, listen to this, that I am moving them from a 
timeline where there was such a lot of contradictions in their life to step into a timeline of acknowledgement and of testimony. This is the time where God says, no more contradictions. And I know many of you are sitting here and there's a lot of contradictions. And this whole wall that the enemy wants to create is a wall because of contradiction. And the Holy Spirit said to me, there's a wall to keep a sound mind in this time in this time there's a real battle out there against our mind because of the greatness of the contradictions and if we dare to start looking at the contradictions and aligning our hearts with the contradictions and we start partnering with the contradictions what happens is we will start having a what if faith what if he doesn't believe? Our faith will start deflating. We will start questioning God about his prophetic words that he has spoken. And the Lord says, we have to be careful in this hour because what the enemy wants to do is he wants you to, do, you to become so negative so that you step out of a realm of being prophetic into a realm of being fleshly. And then when we are fleshly, we key off the contradiction and we start prophesying from a place of the contradiction instead of the place of the word of God. Amen. And then we fall into the trap where we ourselves become the prophet of our own destiny, but it's not God's destiny. It's the enemy's destiny plan. And we ourselves become our greatest enemy. And the Lord says we have to be careful. We have to guard our minds in this hour there's a real war and the lord said stop and nip it in the butt nip the thought because you all know that your thoughts drive your actions and if you don't stop it if you keep on entertaining it it will eventually entertain you and derail you and many people are battling in the season to advance because of the warfare in their minds there's people that disconnect from covenant friends because they believe the lie. They believe the lie and they start co literally covenanting with the enemy with regards to a lie. And then they disconnect from people that God intended for them to be connected with that will take them to their next season. And this is why the Lord says, do not partner with negative thoughts. Do not partner with them because the enemy knows he can use you yourself if you partner with those negative thoughts to block and stop you from stepping into your greatest season. And the Holy Spirit said to me, Kari, this is why 1 Timothy 1, 7, we all know the scripture. And we say it like a little rhyme. God did not give us a spirit of fear. But he gave us a spirit of love, a spirit of power, and a sound mind. Now we all know it. But the problem is, there's a difference between knowing it and living it. There's a big difference. And I saw, I looked and I said, Lord, what does it mean when you tell us that we need to have a sound mind? And the Holy Spirit said to me, go and have a look. I said, I first went to Anton, because he's my living Google. And I said, Anton, what's a sound mind? And he went on this like whole religious thing. And I said, thank you, my baby. I've got something else. Okay. So I Googled. And no, it was very good. It was good, my baby. It was good. But I Googled the word, and I came to the root word, which is a Greek word for the word sound mind. And it, the word, actually, the root, the root word means so pro neo. Now, you don't have to remember this because it's two Greek words coming together as one. And the part that's interesting is that so part, it actually comes from the word sotso. Okay, don't remember this, but what you need to remember is, this was written in the Bible in the original translation because this was God's heart when he wrote the scripture about having a sound mind. It means that your mind is delivered, your mind is revived, your mind is protected and saved. This is what a sound mind means. In order to have a sound mind, God says, I have already, when he written the word, I need you to have a sound mind. He had it in his mind, the father in his mind, that for you to have a sound mind, it means that you are already delivered from those evil thoughts. That's what a sound mind means. That you are already in a place where your mind is revived so you can only think about life and about hope. No death, no condemnation, no depression, no suicide thoughts. Revive to think about light and about life. 
And the third thing is that the sound mind means that, that you are already, your mind is already protected through the blood of Jesus against the attacks of the enemy that is already programmed to take you out. Your mind has been programmed against it, but it's your choice if you want to open it up for the enemy's devices to try to derail you. And the Lord says, you have to be careful. We have to guard our minds. And this is why I believe the Holy Spirit said to me that we have to war over every thought that comes into our mind. And the Lord said to me, Kari, tell my children, this is why I say if they partner with me and not with the contradictions, that they will step with me into the prophetic timeline where there will be a convergence. But in order for that convergence to take, God is saying, I'm releasing a fresh oil and I'm releasing a fresh anointing over you. And what was interesting to me, I said, thank you, Father. And the Holy Spirit reminded me that even David needed an anointing three times because of all the contradictions. God had to come and anoint him three times. The first time was when he was only 13 years old, when he was looking after the sheep. Can you remember? The prophet Samuel, who was the only prophet, came to him and said, God said, you will be king in the place of Saul. He probably didn't even know who Saul was. God choose you at the age of 13. And what was the contradiction? Oh, thank you very much, prophet. You know, take off the oil and just run back and look after the sheep and smell like sheep poo for another seven years. And then it was time again where God said, okay, I have to give him fresh oil, a fresh word, a fresh anointing to take him to the next season. So he stepped over another timeline. So God anointed him again through the leaders of Judah. But yet again, there was a contradiction. Because remember the original word. What did the original word say? King of Israel. This was only the king of Judah. So he got anointed as the king of Judah. But yet the people of Israel didn't accept him. And the king, Saul, hated him. And Saul was after him to kill him. And then the Bible said, and even David had a war in his mind. He had to protect his mind because while he was lying in the cave, the words came to his mind to say, you can kill him now. You can kill him now because you have a word of the Lord that says you will be king. So here it is. I'm bringing him to you. Just take him out right now. But he refused to step out of God's timeline for him. He said, I will not do this. I shift my mind and I will do what God said, even though there's a contradiction of the prophetic word. I know there will be a set time. And the third time was when he stepped out of that cave, the people of Israel came to him and said, we want you to be the next king. And there was a shift because it was the third time when he was anointed, there was a, an alliance in heaven made. And suddenly when the third oil came upon him, there was a shift. There was a convergence of God's prophetic timeline when he was seven years or uh, 13 years old, coming together with the prophetic words and all the oil that he has received to suddenly in a moment birth forth the prophetic word that he will be the leader. But what was so important to me is that not only did he get the oil, but there was an acceptance of the word of the Lord. The people acknowledged him as the new king, where the previous times they didn't. And when he was acknowledged as the king, suddenly there was a manifestation where everyone accepted him, lifted up his hands. And I want to say to you, we are in this timeline. We are in the season that God is saying, no more contradictions. We're shifting out and people will accept you because you are stepping into God's timeline for your life. And there will be a divine convergence of God's power, God's glory and your prophetic word. So that people that frowned upon you, people that said, what about your prophetic words? Where are all of them right? now you will say God said it is now my time there will be a convergence and there will be a manifestation of his promises so that I can have an overcoming testimony and I release over every person that are sitting here tonight with contradictions that you are stepping out of your season of contradictions into your greatest season to see the physical manifestation of God's power God's glory and God's prophetic word in every dimension of your life in Jesus name and fresh oil shall come upon you for this season. Amen and amen. Are you all awake? Yes.
Now, do you want to stand quickly? We're just going to stretch your legs. Thank you, Jesus. Say, thank you, Lord. I activate my faith for the Word. May it accomplish what it was sent for in my life. In my life, in Jesus' name. Amen. Sorry, I lost my mic and then I lost my, my word. Okay, there we go. Okay, are you ready? Don't sleep on me. Thank you, Jesus, for the, for the wind of the Holy Spirit. It's going to blow through the room. All right, with no air con. We're suffering for the kingdom. Are you all right? Okay, we're fine. Okay, load shedding, yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna, uh, I want to move with my word and then we're going to prophesy. So just get ready, stay excited, stay engaged. Are you all awake? Thank you, Jesus. Everybody on Zoom? All awake. Okay, good. All right. So, like Kari said, we are stepping into a new timeline of God, which is really um, a season where God wants to bring ex um, fruitfulness, um, expansion in our lives, and increase in our life. And every, and especially those areas where you had intense warfare in the last season. And remember, fruitfulness, expansion, not only money, it is, it is prosperity in all areas. Where you, had to, where you need prosperity in, 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 in dry places like your relationships, your marriage, certain places, your health. God wants to bring increase in fruitfulness and really a shift and changes in those areas. You know the area where you battle the most is indication of the area of your calling. Because many times we have these main areas of battle and then you have secondary battles. But your main area of battle is always a sign of where your calling line, where your anointing is going to be in terms of what you are going through. So in this season, God is really, like Barna said, going to blow His breath of life over those areas in your life to bring healing, movement, and change. Because when the breath of God comes and He blows it over the spiritual landscape of your life, where there's dead bones and dead things, God blows His breath over it. And suddenly there's a shift. Suddenly a little, little boat on the ocean gets momentum in the sails. There's movement. There's healing. There's restoration all because of the power and the breath of God, the Ruach breath of God that is blowing. And I just know in this season God is going to blow that. God's going to just come and move with us to bring us into a season of rest and expansion. But with that, it means it's, it sounds very glamorous, but it's not going to be a season where God's going to put everything just on your plate while you lie next to the pool drinking a pineapple drink. Okay, as we move into 2023, as we move into the new Hebrew year 5783, that's happening next Sunday on the 25th. And as we move into this new season, we have to work with God for divine recovery because we're going to get these things back in the form of divine recovery. And I, re I was reminded of what Jesus said in Mark 10, 27, where, where Jesus said, with men or according to natural laws, your situation might look impossible. What you need to get back, what you, need, what you have lost generationally and personally might be so far-fetched in getting it back that it's, it, it is against natural laws. I mean, what the people would say, it's, it's totally impossible, and it might, be, it might be impossible, but God says, with me, all things are possible. And that's why the word is divine recovery, because what God's going to give you back is a harvest in the season, but it's recovery. It is divine recovery, getting back what was stolen and what was lost, not only personally, but through the generations. Some of your generations have lost land and houses. You've been robbed from whoever, from uh, grandmother and grandfather and great and that. And God wants to give it back and bring that anointing and that and that and, and, and what you have lost back to you in your life for kingdom advancement in the name of Jesus. So God says, with God's divine help, I can recover anything that you have lost. Any item, anything in your life, I can it's possible through divine, through God's divine help. Recovery can take place. And that's what the key is, divine. Without God, you won't be able to do it because in the natural, it's impossible. So recovery is the word for the season, but it's going to be a war. You know, there's a grace for it, but there's going to be a war to get back. And we need to engage with God and co-labor with God and war the enemy. It's not going to be a thing where you're going to lie next to the pool. And repair is something where you where the definition is to return to a normal state of health mind and strength some people are out of their mind after this season like Kari has said you know we need to get back, you know after the, when God arrives on the scene you're gonna get back your sound mind and you're gonna think straight for a change recovery is the action or the process of regaining possession or control over something that is lost or stolen personally and generationally so God is saying, and you know, you know the biggest thing is our, our natural mind wars against the things of the Spirit, that you think, but how in the world is God going to bring 
my grand great granny's farm that we have lost you know god told me he's going to have property uh, property ownership again he's going to restore this and that and our natural mind wars against the things of the spirit because we do not realize we just think you know how god's going to do it you know i can't see a way how god's going to do it that's not your problem yeah. that's not your problem you should never allow your natural mind to come and war against the things of the spirit because God has a way to be able to do it. That's God's, that's God's um, department to how He's going to do it and how He's going to bring it. The Bible says our natural mind wars constantly against the things of the Spirit. So you constantly think about your things. You look at the natural circumstances and then your natural mind starts worrying about you know, logic and those type of things. And logic is the enemy of the supernatural. One plus one doesn't make sense with the supernatural with God. So you need to program yourself. And you need to say, I, 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 don't, I, I don't know, but I know God is a God that can bring divine recovery into my life. How He does it, I don't know, but I believe for the maximum, for the fullness. So we see the Bible is full of stories where people have really come to a place of rock, being rock bottom. And even death occurred, but through God's divine intervention and recovery, all was restored. Amen. And it's unnatural. I thought about the Shunammite woman. Do you remember this lady? It was a rich lady. She sowed into the kingdom. God blessed her with a son. And when, you know, some people um, have everything, but there's some things they don't have. They might have money, but not health. And they might have certain things, but there's just a lack sometimes in an area that money can't buy. So this woman didn't have a child. She got a child. Then the child died. She said, oh, thank you very much. This is not going to happen on my watch. This is not acceptable. She got to, go to the prophet and said, you know, you better do something about it because God gave me the promise. So God resurrected the son and there was a divine recovery on that level. And then we see in the next season, God came and he gave her full divine recovery because after that season, she went to the Philistines land and she, she, she lived there for seven years because there was famine in Israel. And when she came back, she lost everything. She was a super rich woman with land and wealth. She lost everything. She lost the land. She came down. She came back to Israel down and out. And only like God is at that moment to decide when she came back, let me go to the king and ask him. Maybe I can get like a, you know, a little something back or just let, just bring my petitions before him. At that very moment, talk about divine convergence and divine alignment. God orchestrates in the, in, the, in, the, in, in the womb of time, in the framework of time, that at the moment when she walks into the palace, Gehazi, which is Elijah's sidekick, is busy telling the, the king about the story about the Shunammite woman, how the prophet raised him from the son from the dead and blah, blah, blah. And the king is like, oh, wow, you know, and he reads in, he read in the books and he was so amazed and he was so touched emotionally. And this woman came in and he says, oh, my goodness, that's the woman. That is her that I'm just talking to you about. And the king was so moved and he said, oh my goodness, you know, when God brings the right time, he says, give this woman back all her land and the produce that she would have had for the seven years that she wasn't here. I mean, isn't God amazing? And I mean, on my natural mind, I wouldn't think God's going to, yeah, God's going to restore, but restoration and restitution, extra, extra. I mean, this is amazing. And only God can bring your footsteps to the right time and to create this miracle for you for divine recovery. With Samaria, it was the same. When that city was besieged, in one moment, I mean, it was terrible what happened there. It was famine. There was moral, spiritual decay. I mean, what's the world coming to? Um, I mean, they want to eat each other's children. And it was ridiculous. But one word of the Lord, one prophetic word from the prophet, shifted everything in the spirit. And there was a divine, divine convergence. And there was a divine recovery. And there was a shift within 24 hours from nothing to overflow. That's what God can do. So when a prophet or when the word of the Lord is being spoken into the spiritual realm, it has a spiritual effect to shift things amazingly. And we saw as the word went out, God worked behind the scenes miraculously and orchestrated divine recovery for that whole city from a place of extreme famine to extreme overflow. Anyway, as I was saying, but the best story about divine recovery is uh, that gives us actually keys to follow and gives us pattern so that we can model our lives after that to follow and, and move into divine recovery is in the story of David and 1 Samuel 30. Quickly, I know it's like I'm going to move. So this is the story. You know the story. David and his men came back to their town, Ziklag. They had war. They came back. And it was a terrible thing that they, that they found there. Their generational enemies, the Amalekites, have, while they were gone, attacked the whole place, burned down the city, took their women and children, livestock, everything gone 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 and it was a multiple destruction that faced them in a moment they lost everything who of you have in a moment felt you've lost everything 
everything that mattered to you, it happened to them. When they saw that, they were devastated. They didn't know where the woman and the kids was, my little baby that I saw last week. Were they dead? Where are they? The plaque is up in smoke in the ruins. That's how they find the place. This is terrible. In one moment, the same happened to Job. In one moment, he lost everything. How do you ever recover from that? How do you ever recover from that? And we are people with emotions. God made us emotional beings, right? So, with, you know, shock, horror, and trauma has the ability to affect your soul area in such a way that it can derail you from your destiny and it can derail you from your relationship with God. It has the ability, and if you don't process trauma and shock and, 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 and horror and those things that you experience from the loss, because divine recovery is the opposite of lost. You can only have divine recovery when you've lost something. Okay? So, if you don't process trauma and shock from, from, that, uh, from that event, it can block you permanently from advancing and from moving to, to move with God to get recover, divine recovery back. And a lot of people actually stay stuck in that time emotionally and they never deal with the trauma uh, on that moment. And we see in this thing that this is crucial to deal with it. So what was the steps that David took, the processing steps to deal with this? We see that him and his men, the Bible said they, they cried out loud. I mean, I think with open mouths, it was just that raw pain that came out. Unsure, don't know what's going on. They cried extensively, the Bible said, and they cried until they could no more. Who of you have cried until you could no more? You double clutch and double clutch again, and thank you for that. Uh, and, then, and then you cried and you feel you are, there's nothing more, you can't cry anymore. And then the Bible says the men with him were bitterly grieved. In such a level that they've lost their soundness of mind. Sure. And they became irrational and suddenly they want to kill their leader. Their BFF covenant leader, they love him. And suddenly when you are bitterly grieved, when your soul is in trauma and distress and you face trauma, suddenly they have irrational behavior. The soundness of the mind go and they want to kill their leader. People become like that, unnatural. But we see, and this is our first step to divine recovery. The first thing that David did, once he's cried, he's cried, ate carpet, double clutch, whatever he did, to, to, to process the pain because we're normal. We, we're just normal people. He strengthened and encouraged himself in the Lord. Amen. He strengthened and encouraged himself in the Lord, which means that he ran to God, not away from God. And because he strengthened and encouraged himself in the Lord, he did it with his uh, choice of his will. If you have to rely on your emotions, it's not going to work because your emotions are going to tell you, I don't feel like it at the moment. So sometimes you have to take your will, which is another area of your soul, and say, I know this is the right thing to do because this is what that's going to, that, that's going to make me survive. And this is what he did. And I was thinking, how do you strengthen and encourage yourself in the Lord when you, when you feel so low? And the key is through praise and thanksgiving. And it's not praise like praise and worship. It is like when you face this traumatic situation, you shift into that mode by a choice of your to say, Father, I choose to praise you for a divine outcome. Lord, I see the, dev the devastation around you, but I thank you that you have a way out. I praise you for the way out. I really praise you for divine solutions and divine helpers that's going to come forth. I thank you, Father, that you are the one that brings a divine convergence and an alignment in the Spirit. And all things work together for my good. I praise you and I thank you. Now that brings a shift in the atmosphere because it's tough to praise the Lord when you feel down and out. Who, nobody wants to do that. It takes spiritual maturity to do that. And, and David knew through experience, listen, I have to shift myself out of this depression and strengthen and encourage myself in the Lord. Psalm 22, 3 says, God inhabits our praises. So when you praise Him and you start, contrary to your situation, start releasing prophetically um, your trust in, uh, in Him through praises, making declarations, God comes down in your situation, doesn't matter how bad it is. It is part of spiritual protocol and spiritual rules of engagement that God gives us in His Word. God says, if you praise me, I will inhabit those praises. I will come down in your situation. And Psalm 100 verse 4 says, God gives you, um, the praise gives you access to the presence of God. So, we have to follow spiritual protocol and rules of engagement to shift our situation and to work with God to achieve divine recovery. So, you know, even if you, do, if you, even if, if you have to do it... Um, just by your will, forcing yourself to do it. 
to say, because I know if I praise God in the midst of my trauma and my situation and my loss and what's going on around me, and I'm thanking Him in advance for, like I've demonstrated to you, God will come into my situation because that's spiritual rules of engagement. God says, then I will come in to the situation and start to shift it and war on your behalf. Yeah, Isaiah 61.3 says, praise if you start to praise with your mouth, in spite of the negativity, then a, a garment forms that covers your life. As I-61 says, praise causes a spiritual garment to, to form upon you that brings deliverance, protection, and preservation. And God steps into your situation. If you do not choose through this spiritual rules of engagement to choose to move into that direction, God doesn't come down in your situation. And the Bible says in Isaiah 61, you, you remain with a heavy and a burdened and a failing spirit. It's easy. And David knew that key in the word and he went for it. Let's look at Job's response. I'm moving quickly. Job, how did jo Job process his loss in one moment? Firstly, the Bible says he tore his robe and shaved his head which is signs of mourning. So Job, was, they were not superwomen and supermen. They had emotions. They were processing the stuff. You know what I mean? Cry your cries, eat the carpet, do whatever you need to do. But once you've worked through the emotions, go and engage with God through His Word to get His presence down on your situation so you can start the process for divine recovery because there's always divine recovery, a rope of hope and a door of hope that God has for you, divine solutions in every situation. Nothing is so lost and so far removed that God can't bring it back. That's not all. The next action is he fell to the ground and started worshiping God. Wow, isn't that mature? Lost everything, his kids is dead, everything gone, 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 gone. Camels, he's got nothing left. And after he's mourned a bit and shaved this and that and pulled off his robe, he fell and worshiped God. Isn't that so mature? And then he declared with his mouth, naked I came into the world and naked I will exit. That's what he's trying to say. Lord, everything I have is anyway yours. Everything you've entrusted to me is anyway yours. It was never mine in the first place. Which we see that his heart was disconnected from the stuff, from the goods. His money didn't own him. He was disconnected from it because where your treasure, your heart will be. That's why, you know, when there's financial shaking, people jump off the roof, shoot themselves, you know, whatever, because their treasure is where their heart is. So in the so in Job 1 said, in all of this, Job sinned not, no sinful responses, and did not charge God foolishly. He could have said, oh God, I'm righteous, I'm amazing, I'm fantastic, I'm in right standing with you. Why is this happening to me? This is not fair. And you start blaming God. And he did not do that. Isn't that... Fantastic. So we can see from the biblical patterns how people posture themselves to get into a process of divine recovery and divine restoration because God is the God of all restoration. But we have to move with Him and flow with Him. Okay, and co-labor with Him. Otherwise, we will not access it. So the first step is to strengthen and encourage yourself in the Lord. The second key to divine recovery is find someone um, that's in a covenant relationship with you to agree in prayer with you about the matter. The prayer of agreement is a very powerful spiritual weapon. And we see what David did in this situation. When he cried, he cried and strengthened himself. He said, okay, God, now I need revelation. Give me revelation. I need to, what's, what's the next step? Can I know what to do? Because I need to get my wife and my babies back and my cattle back. And so does the other men that want to kill me. I'm under pressure here. So I give me cutting edge revelation from the Holy Spirit. I know exactly how to move forward. So he asked the priest, Abiathar, to bring him the ephod. Now, the, ephod, the, the priest, the role of the high priest in that time was to, he carried the ephod, which was part of his priestly garment, but it was also an object that was used for divine revelation. So, and the priest's assignment was also to inquire of the Lord. So he, he, took, he went into agreement with the priest and he, and he prayed in agreement and he, and, he, and, he, and he merged almost those two things in agreement so that he can get divine revelation. Matthew 18, 19 says, If two agree on earth, harmonize and make symphony together, whatever they ask from the Lord will come to pass, will be done to them um, by their Father in heaven. So it for me is, don't pray with anybody. You're not going to stop, you know, whoever next to the road and say, oh, stand in agreement with me. To me, it speaks about a covenant relationship where you have a covenant believer, like a brother and sister, that's in one mind and one heart with you about what you're praying with. Their hearts are connected with you. Or your spiritual covering or spiritual leader that's already in a covenant relationship with you. There's power that comes through that prayer of agreement. And there's revelation 
Now, I mean, sometimes people under our covering, they, you know, they, uh, you know, they say, can you pray with us? And then God will give us revelation because of our legal relationship with one another. Okay, because there's a covenant relationship. And so the prayer of agreement can, bring, can re release God's power, revelation. It breaks um, limitations. It brings deliverance and opens doors. And the Bible says revelation is found in a cluster. So I've never in my life moved and made important decisions without, without making sure that I have the right revelation to move forward. And I went to my, you know, to my spiritual father and, and, and people around me that are mature believers that I trusted to test and to pray with me. And then when I got that confirmation and revelation, I moved forward prayerfully and carefully. Okay, so you should never make decisions uh, without that. Step number three, key three for divine recovery. We have to act and move in faith, knowing God only responds to active faith. That's part of the spiritual rules of engagement. You ain't having anything from heaven, divine, divine recovery, without active faith. Faith is the divine exchange rate between heaven and earth. You can cry, you can hang on the chandeliers, you can do all the types of things that you want to do to get God's attention, but the only thing that brings the exchange is active faith. Okay, so if you know it, you're in trauma, you, you, you're going through a difficult time, but you know with your mind, part of the rules, I have to stay in faith. I cannot allow my shield of faith to lift. I need to keep it up. I need to keep my faith into a place where I need to keep it alive. I have to war sometimes. And, you know, when you go through battles to say, I know that if I drop my faith, I have to keep my faith at a certain level. Otherwise, I'm not going to transact with heaven. So David inquired of the Lord, must I pursue the enemies? God said, yes, and you will recover everything. That was the word of the Lord. Now he's got revelation. And once you've got confirmation of God, from God what to do, then do it. Then do it. Many times, week after week, we, we give you the word of the Lord and say, this is what the Lord is saying, do that. And you can either choose to do it or not to do it. Yeah, amen. And um, I've seen in my life when we act, many times God has said to me, Anton, well, God only acts when we act. When we move, God moves. And may, I've seen it most of my life. As soon as we take the first move, then God moves with us. It's not God. Well, sometimes God can do anything He wants. But many times we have to act and then God acts. David didn't sit, there, sit around and moan and groan and fume and scream and throw the tantrum and everything. He didn't do that. Yeah. But he did what? He didn't coffee with his friends. He's, David released faith by acting what God told him to do. Because faith is demonstrated through actions. People will see from the outside. God told me this revelation, I'll move. So what was the last thing that um, God has told you? Have you done that? In Jesus' name. We bind every spirit of distraction. Okay. Okay. Listen. God will not, God will not force you to step out of faith. To step out in faith. That's your responsibility. Okay. Oh, God even did it for me or whatever. But you didn't step out of faith, Felicia. Okay, God will not force you. God is a gentle. God will never force you to step out, of, step out in faith. That's what you need to do and you demonstrate it with your actions. Because faith without works is dead. So we can see Jesus could even do no miracles in Nazareth because of the unbelief that was there. I think Jesus, you are mighty, you are powerful. You are, you are God on the earth almost in that power. But I mean, he did such limited miracles because of people's uh, lack of faith. And lack of faith, doesn't matter what's going on, is blocks and stops the Lord's power from working in your situation. It's a very powerful negative force that just blocks, blocks what needs to be done. Key number four to divine recovery. I'm almost done. Take your God-given authority and attack the enemy. Take your God-given authority and attack the enemy. Amen. Amen. There we go. In 1 Samuel 30, David and his men not only attacked but kept on fighting until the enemy was totally subdued and all was recovered. You can't attack the enemy once and say, oh, it's so bad and what. No, you need to keep on because sometimes it's a process to resist the enemy until the enemy is subdued. Okay, that means we have to be tenacious. We need to be violent. The kingdom of God suffers violent. We violent, take it by force. We have to be tenacious. We, we cannot stop and or attack once. You must keep on, keep on, keep on and not give up until the enemy is subdued. Some of us deal with, with long-standing enemies coming through our generations. Look at the Amalekites. They attacked the Israelites over every corner and every chapter of the Bible. 
until Haman was the last Amalekite that died, and with that, the final enemy was taken out, generational enemies. What generational enemies are you fighting? Okay, so I want to say to you, divine recovery, if you want to focus on that, you want some divine recovery in this season. Thank you, five people, fantastic. Okay, it is much more effortless if you focus to bring your life in alignment with the Word of God. The more alignment your life is with the Word of God, the quicker it is to bring divine recovery. The Bible is your divine recovery manual. So we're keeping that. That is crucial. Joshua 1, 8 says, The book of the law, the Bible, shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall read and meditate on a day and night, and you must be careful to do everything in accordance with what is written in it, so that your paths will be prosperous and you will be successful. Not might, maybe, will be. So we can just see that, you know, we have to align ourselves with what the Word says. Read the Word, eat the Word, meditate on it, through the eye gate, through the ear gates, from your mouth, every place. And when you have alignment in terms of first seeking the kingdom of God and God's righteousness, the rest shall come, including divine recovery. So we have to take up our authority and engage with the enemy. God's not going to do it for us. God says in the New Testament, Jesus says in the New Testament, we have to be aware of the enemy's devices, his schemes, his plots, his specific strategies that wants to ruin your spiritual health. The enemy comes, I mean, it's not hardcore stuff in this season. It's seducing things. It is beguiling things. You can't just see if it's a little bit of the truth. It's almost off, but it's not. You can't really. We have to have discernment in this yes, season. Amen. There's many things that's going to come and beguile and seduce us to do certain things. I'm ending off. Listen to this. Jesus gave instructions in the New Testament, Matthew 12, 29. Listen, he says, you have to first bind the strong man if you want to recover the goods that he has stolen from you. So what has happened that Jesus said, but all the stuff that's been stolen from your generations, from your personal life, they're not gone. They are somewhere. They are locked up in the this, in this strong man's warehouses. And it's just time to unlock them and get your stuff back. It's not lost. It's there. It's locked up in the spirit. And then Jesus says in Luke 11, 21 to 22, when the strong man is fully armed and he guards his own house, his belongings are undisturbed and secure. It's your stuff that's in there. Never mind his belongings. It's your stuff that's in there. And he is fully armed. That means we have to disarm him. What can we do to unlock the storehouses, disarm him, break that power, and get our stuff back? Because there's some generational stuff that you need to get back. Yeah. And God needs it for kingdom advancement. It's going to cost money to advance the kingdom. God wants to give you a lot of stuff back in this season of the kingdom age where you're going to see kingdom power and authority on the earth. I promise you the Holy Spirit's going to move. But it's, you, you need everything that it was lost in the generations in terms of your harvest to be able to push for this kingdom assignment and advance the kingdom in this season. And this is what God wants to give you back. It's on His menu. And the Bible says, but, but, say but. but. It's an important word. When someone stronger than the strong man attacks and overpowers him and robs him of all his armor on which he relied, you can divide his goods as spoils. Okay, so this sounds to me, where can I sign? Because now I know the strong man, some strong man or the entity has got my stuff locked up in the spiritual realm, in the storehouses. So I want to know how can I, how can I get it back? What's the spiritual protocol that I can follow to get it back from this, from this person, from this strong man? The Bible says if somebody stronger comes, who's that somebody stronger? It's us. It is us. It is us. Jesus already overcome the enemy. Yeah, once and for all. Everything he was defeated. Jesus did everything for us and then he gave us delegated authority. Everything he took, he gave us delegated authority. This is quite important because many people want God to do certain things. But Jesus said, I don't have the mandate anymore to do it. I've delegated. You know, once you've delegated something to somebody, it's not yours anymore. You've delegated. So God says, you need to first act. Jesus said, you need to first act. I've given you delegated authority. I've given you the keys of the kingdom to bind and to loose what is really bound in heaven, already loosened in heaven, just to execute. It is a powerful, powerful authority that you have to be able to execute. And when you engage with that, you can overpower that strong man and strip him of his protection. But you can only be stronger than the strong man and overpower him if you break any legal authority that the strong man has over your life. And you break that through repentance and intercession. 
the spiritual realm only works in a legal framework. Okay, and if there's any legality and technicality that the strong man has, because the Bible says the armor and the protection of the strong man. What is that? The armor and protection of the strong man is, the, is covenants, oaths, and agreements that was cut with the strong man generationally and personally through, through sin. Through sin that is pretty much unconfessed in most cases. So we need to say, Lord, how do I identify the strong man? You identify the type of strong man by the fruits in your life. Then you know what's the identity of the strong man that is guarding your stuff by the fruits in your life. Okay, if it's a strong man of death, you will have pre a lot of freak accidents, abortions, premature death, um, destruction by fire, abortions. There's certain uh, fruits in your life that you can see what is, what is the, the strong man guarding your stuff. Um, so in all those areas. So what, what the Lord is saying, you need to go and uh, apply the blood that is paid for everything, specifically in those things, renounce it and break it by the blood of Jesus. Because Jesus has already paid the price for everything. Jesus died that all sinners can be saved. Amen. Is all sinners saved? No. Why not? Because you have to appropriate what Jesus has done for you by faith for yourself. Okay, so Jesus paid paid for everything but we must go and appropriate what the blood paid for and there needs to be a shift otherwise we perish because of a lack of knowledge about these matters so i need to know how can i demolish the armor and the protection of the strong man and we see this is the the contracts and the oaths and agreements spiritually that he has that has not been broken the fact we are born again does not take those things away so we apply the blood ask the lord what are they and break them in jesus name and then we can take through authority we can come and disarm the strong man and take our stuff back yes. okay so you said where can i sign okay that's amazing last key for divine recovery seal your divine recovery through giving when david returned from ziklag the bible says he recovered all and more isn't god amazing he got everything back nothing was taken nothing and he got the spoils of the amalekites and it was absolutely amazing god's going to give you restoration and restitution in this season giving you back plus interest Okay, you saw the seed. Okay. When he came back, he, <laughs> he sent part of the spoil to the elders of Judah, saying, here's a blessing and a gift for you, a spoil of the enemies of the Lord. And he sowed that seed uh, as a response and a declaration, thanking God for, for the divine recovery, but also activating a supernatural law where he said, I am sowing the seed to secure continued blessings to flow into my life. I'm sowing the seed, I'm planting it because I know it's my protection for my future. So as soon as you start getting divine, um, the divine uh, restoration and recovery in your life, when you get those balls, it's good to make sure that you sow seed into your future to secure your, your, your future blessings and your protection like David did. So we see this man was very clever in, in follow spiritual principles, um, getting divine recovery plus more, and securing his future as well. So I'm saying this is amazing. In Jesus' name. So I want us to pray together. And um, we are going to reverse some stuff in the name of Jesus. So let's take up the offering. When you, when you sow a seed, just say, Lord, I'm asking you for a divine reversal tonight. I'm asking you for revelation to show me how I can disarm the, the protection of the strong man. I'm asking, Lord, listen, there's a special grace in this season. We are done. We're going to pray and then we're going to prophesy. There is a special grace in the season where God is causing us to break out and to break free. Yes. There's an acceleration in the spirit. I'm trusting the Lord just in one moment in meeting like that as we pray and reverse some things that the Lord will bring divine exemption and just, and just reverse things on your behalf. You know, there's an old season we had to take years, you know, struggle through all the prayers and all those things. And when it's the right season, God just comes in a moment and breaks the chains because it's a set time. God needs you somewhere. You need to be ready. God wants to use you somewhere. You can't be stuck in, in one place where he needs you in another place. Okay. So this is, uh, this is uh, exciting times. It's an exciting time to be alive. Okay. Let's stand. We're going to pray. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, Rabo Shanta, I want you to activate your faith. As we're going to pray, just say it like you mean it, and we're going to trust the Lord for a divine reversal in the spiritual realm. Okay, are we ready? Okay, let's go. One, two, three. Father, I connect my faith tonight to your word that says what is impossible in my life according to natural laws 
of man is possible with you. Father, I declare and I decree that with your divine help, recovery of anything in my life that was lost or stolen is possible. Listen, say it like you mean it. I choose to turn to you, O God, and I praise you for what you're about to do in my life. I thank you for a divine convergence that's happening in the Spirit, divine ways that is opening up for me. I praise you that all things, that all things, that all things are working together for my good right now. Lord, I repent for we have partnered with the spirit of unbelief or doubt. Forgive me. I break those agreements. And tonight, I choose to activate and lift my shield of faith again. I ask forgiveness and I repent in Jesus' name for any oath, covenant or agreement that was cut personally or generationally with any strong man of death and destruction, strong man of sexual iniquity or strong man of poverty or any other strong man, known or unknown. I repent of any spoken, written, covenant, blood covenants or recorded covenants that gave the strong man authority over my life and my generations to kill, to steal, and to destroy right now by the legal blood of Jesus. And because of my repentance, I revoke, I reverse, and I cancel these oaths, covenants, and agreements in Jesus' name. And I now destroy the power of ownership, the power of access and the power of attorney that these strong men had over my life. I bind every strong man operating against me in the name of Jesus. And I command you to let go of what you have stolen from me. Father, send your angels with keys to unlock my goods from the storehouses of the enemy. I call it forth. I demand a release. And I praise you, Lord. And I thank you right now for divine recovery. And in this season, I declare and I decree, I will recover all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Wasn't that good? Amen. I promise you when we pray like that, there is a, a divine reversal of things. So, Father, thank you for a special grace over your people tonight to break them loose from the generational restrictions uh, of the strong man in Jesus' name. Where's the... Where's the... Okay. The uh, um, Anton? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. While I was watching you talk now, um, I just got a vision of... A kid on the playground bragging about how amazing his father is and that's the way you talk about God and I was reminded of the amplified uh, when the amplified speaks of fear of the Lord it says worship him with awful reverence and respect and I really feel that just as how you talk about how awesome your father is God brags about how awesome you are as well and I got the scripture Luke 12 verse 48 too much is given much is tested, and I really feel because God can trust you with more, He's going to give you more. Yes. Amen. My sister, my sister isn't here tonight, so I feel like the Lord gave me her words as well, which is <laughs> a little bit stressful. But anyhow, um, firstly, Zoe, um, prophets, prophetess Zoe, I very nervous to give this word because i'm like lord this is a big but i during worship i just saw a vision of you dancing over documents and while you were busy dancing in the spirit i just saw this whirlwind that made a porthole between you and the father and that whirlwind 
turned into such a powerful force that it literally just ricocheted and scattered the enemy that was trying to come against you. And I don't know what those specific documents are, but I believe the Holy Spirit will reveal that to you. But then the scripture that the Lord gave me is Isaiah 41, 15 to 16. It says, and in the Passion Translation, it says, I am making you into a powerful threshing instrument with teeth new and sharp. And in the Passion Translation footnotes, it says, at that teeth, it says that the two mouth sword, referencing Hebrews 12, 4, 12, it is, for it is spoken from God's mouth and it is released in power as, as it is spoken from your mouth. And I believe that God is going to be giving you new and sharp words that you are to declare. And the next part of that verse says, you will reduce hills to chaff and crush mountains, which we know reference kingdoms and nations, and to, into dust. And you will winnow them and the stormy wind will blow them away. And that was so beautiful. I believe that's the stormy wind, the whirlwind that the Lord showed me around you. Then you will spin and dance with rejoicing in Yahweh, boasting with admiration in the Holy One of Israel. In Jesus' name. So I just bless you with that. Um, and then Vanessa's friend, Lucille. It is Lucille, right? Um, I just um, felt that the Lord is wanting to give you a new um, perspective on boundaries because you have a very willing heart to love and to take care of lots of things and to serve lots of people. But I feel like the Lord doesn't want, like the scripture that the Lord gave me is Matthew 7 verse 6, do not give dogs what is sacred, do not throw your pearls to pigs. If you do, they will trample, may, may trample them under feet and turn you and tear you into pieces. And I just feel like God wants to give you wisdom in the season of how to steward that which he has given you and where to steward it because it may not be appreciated or welcomed everywhere. And he wants to give you wisdom that where there are hungry people and where there are people who are ready and desperate, those are the people he will lead you to give. But not everyone is or at the place, should I say, where they are ready to receive that which God has given you. So do not take it personally if people are like not responding in the way that you would expect it, but it's just that they are not at that place or they're not ready for that. I believe God's going to give you, he's going to give you wisdom and discernment in this season to understand and also for your own peace that, um, and just a little thing that I um, read earlier this week that I felt was appropriate for you is that boundaries increase your ability to care about what matters most. And so I believe the Holy Spirit wants to give you healthy boundaries to protect what he's given you, but to also to steward wisely that which is meant for others or that which is not meant for others. So I believe it's something that you're going to be walking out in this season in wisdom in Jesus name. And then Chris, um, I just saw this vision of you looking at your reflection, but then it turned into the Father's reflection. And I believe, obviously, like the scripture says, you know, we behold the word of God and we're transformed into his likeness and into his image. Um, but I also, then the scripture the Lord gave me for you is James 1 25 that says, those who set their gaze deeply into the perfecting law of liberty are fascinated by and respond to the truth that they hear and are strengthened by it. And I believe that God wants to strengthen you in this season to say, because you've been trying to do a lot of things in your own effort that you've been trying to work and been so faithfully and diligently doing stuff, but a lot of it has become exhausting. And I feel like God is saying, he, just come and gaze at me, come and look at me. As you spend time with me, I will strengthen you. I will give you the supernatural upon your natural as you bring me that which you have. And it is going to just be in sitting and just gazing into Jesus, gazing into that without the works and without the effort that God is saying, let him show you the levels of supernatural that he wants to take you to that is not not that is beyond what your natural can take you to um yeah so i just bless you with that in jesus name and then arna it is arna right um i just feel like the enemy has tried to discourage you with hope deferred things not happening when you had thought or by when you had thought that they were going to happen and i feel like god just wants to encourage you in this season that he has not forgotten he you are not forgotten and the things that you have the seeds that you've been sowing and the things that you've been praying into they have been producing even though you have not seen it in the natural that in the spirit god they have been going into like a vault and into a safe place that they are they're not falling to fruitless ground and the scripture that the lord just gave me for you is hebrews 6 11 to 12 and um, that says we long to we long to see you passionately advance until the end and find your hope fulfilled so don't allow your heart to grow dull or lose your enthusiasm but follow the example of those who fully received what god has promised because they, of their strong faith and patient endurance and so i just encourage you to like to keep on keeping on because god has given you every 
everything that and it is coming <laughs> if you like you, he's encouraging you that it is coming it is there um and then on zoom um amy martinez um i just heard i just heard taylor made and i just believe god is saying he has taylor made the destiny and the future and the plan that he has for you and that before you were ever born in your your book of life was written and he taylor made and wrote down the very details of your destiny and he wants to just remind you today that that every little detail is important to him that a taylor custom makes clothing that fits it takes time you have to go for fittings you have to go back and forth but that it cannot be rushed because to make that level of perfection to make that level of craftsmanship it takes time and so i believe god is wanting you to learn to be patient in this season for the tailor-made things that he has for you because they are better than things that you can buy in the store that don't fit but that, that he's custom making things for you and the scripture that i that the lord wants me to just release over you is ephesians 2 10 that you have become his poetry a recreated people that will fulfill the destiny and i declare of you that you will fulfill the destiny that he has given to you because you are joined to jesus christ the anointed one and even before you were born, born God planned in advance your destiny and the good works that you would do to fulfill, it, to fulfill it. So as you keep on seeking Jesus, as you keep on spending time with him, you will see him fulfill every little detail. And as I said, even though it takes longer, it is going to be better than something that would be quick. <laughs> it's going to be far better. And then Joanne Marcosia, I don't know how you pronounce that surname. Um, but I just saw this picture of fake flowers and I just felt like the enemy has tried to keep you content with something that is a counterfeit and something that is, um, yeah, that is an artificial version of what God wants to give you. And even though even in the natural real flowers take time, it takes energy to water and to cultivate. I believe like God is saying, don't settle for the, uh, the counterfeit. I have the real and I have the best for you. And even though it takes time and it takes effort and it takes prayer, God is saying, keep on my daughter because I have something that is far more real and more beautiful and lasting than any fake alternative that the enemy could give you and the scripture that I have the Lord is if um, Hebrews 12 verse 2 that says we look away from the natural realm and we focus our attention and expectation onto Jesus who birthed faith within us who leads us forward into faith's perfection and I believe that God is bringing you into that faith's perfection and it is something that is going to be that real and beautiful like a bunch of flowers that you cannot no man could make something as beautiful as what Jesus crafted and created and then lastly I have a word for my cello but I can give it to him afterwards if we're running out of time. Thank you. Um, the lady in the green. Um, yeah, I... Rachel. Uh, Rachel, I just saw you as this, like, huge truck with, like, this... Uh, with like a lot of lot of space and um and i saw how you're like looking to the variety that it like looks really like amazing from the outside but it has almost like nothing there's no room it's like a one-man car and i felt god said i created you to almost have this huge capacity because i'm going to put a lot in you and the people that might look like they're getting there faster and better like that car but i felt god said that i am working in you almost like such a, a, a larger process like along because a truck takes long to get somewhere but it carries a lot and i felt like God saying in the season I've put a lot in you and f and because of that I'm taking you to the places where I want you to go in events because I really felt like it was a truck travels and I felt like God said you you travel you're going to travel a lot and you're maybe all like traveling a lot but um I just really felt God said in this season I'm going to be even more in you and I almost like see your the truck getting longer and longer and longer. And I felt God said that he's connecting you to places and to people like people are going to need this what you carry and then almost like when people are going to see that truck driving um, from a father know like you're on a mission you, you you're like you you're gonna bring the word of god people are almost gonna be expected when people say like they're expected for what god what god has put in you and that you will deliver it and when you deliver it it'll just be almost just i just see this a huge outpouring like revival outpouring wherever you go of abundance in jesus mighty name Erna. Yeah, sorry, picking on you tonight. <laughs> I, I just saw uh, in in the spirit. I saw a parched land with dry ground, and then the next minute, I saw that land turn into a beautiful flower, a field of flowers. And the scripture that 
that the Lord showed me was in it was Psalm 1 verse 1 to 3 and it says blessed is the man who, who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly nor stands in the seat of uh, sin uh, nor walks in the path of sinners uh, sits in the seat of the scornful or walks in the path of the sinners but his delight is in the law of the Lord and in his law he meditates day and night and then it says and he shall and he's and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water and I just and I just sense the Lord uh, saying to me to tell you that you've been listening to some counsel and I'm not talking about people but w thoughts that have been projected by the enemy into your mind and that he wants you to cut those off and replace them with the word of God the truth of the word and as you begin to replace those wrong thoughts that the field will turn into a blossoming blooming uh, the dry land will turn into a blooming field amen, amen. Okay. evangelist daniel i've got a word for you um i hear the lord said get ready my son because i want to birth more of the spirit in you and what i want to birth in in you you must step forward and now is the time and the lord said you will step down in my glory you will sleep in the glory and you will wake up in the glory and what you have seen in the past is nothing what i want to do with you now and the lord says my son i'm so well pleased with you because i saw there was persecution and you didn't back up in that time and the lord said you didn't flee when men was despise and talked about you and give you harsh words and harsh looks but some of the people I even saw they they didn't um, receive the promises that I've given you but my son I'm so happy and well pleased with you because you delighted in the promises that I gave you you respect those promises that I've given you and therefore my son this is the time and it is not coincidence that you come to Cape Town here and the Lord said I must tell you tonight he is he is even impregnated you with a new level and a new expectations of signs wonders and miracles that you will step into and the Lord said this is your portion and this is your day and now is the time and you will see that glory that new saturated glory of the one of the entitled one and that is what I'm birthing in you tonight in Jesus name thank you Marisa that was a good word I just want to say Amy are you happy Amy from New York that uh, you gave a word over her now and what you don't know is that she contacted me last week with regards to a calling and a destiny and you exactly prophesied that over her. So we just want to say thank you Jesus for confirming his word. And then um, Zoe, the Lord said to me this morning already that the two of you are about to enter into a new season at the strong man of poverty that's been fighting against you, trying to stop you, trying to block you on every side. God is saying, I'm dealing with it for once and for all. And the Lord is saying, I'm breaking you out of a place of confinement where the enemy thought he can keep you. And when you try to move to the left, there was a stop. When you try to move to the right, there was a stop. And God is saying, I'm breaking you out and I'm bringing you into a new level of ministry. And God is saying that which you've been fighting in the previous season, you will no longer fight anymore and the Lord says I'm going to even open up two supply lines for you I see a ministry supply line but I also see a supply line in business and God says the Lord says I'm going to remove the rags of the previous season that the enemy tried to put upon your shoulders I'm going to remove the reproach from your husband says the Lord and God is saying I'm going to elevate you and I'm going to give you a new platform and in this season my power and my Holy Spirit will come behind you and you shall speak a word and there shall be contacts and contracts coming your way God says, for I am opening up a new line for you in the marketplace. God says, I'm going to reposition you back into the marketplace, but I'm going to give you a new word. And God says, you will come with power and with fire in the marketplace. And the two of you will minister together, not only in the church mountain, but also in the, uh, in the mountain, in the business world. And where the enemy has tried to resist you, and even to a place where I felt in the spirit that you had to fight for everything that you even have on you. And you know, we haven't been in contact for 
a long time, but I saw that the enemy even tried to pull the clothes off you. God is saying, I'm causing a divine reversion of that, a reversal of that which the enemy wanted to do. For I am bringing you into your kingly and queenly season. I am going to remantle you. I am going to relaunch you. And God says, people will be excited. And God says, get yourself ready. You always had your mind just to go so far, but God says, get ready for I am taking you to the nations in this season. God says, it's a time for the nations. And I saw the UK, that Lord is opening up a door for the UK for you. And I felt that the Lord said, this will be the beginning. From the UK, I see Scotland. And God is saying, it's the season of the fullness of my promises over the two of you. And where the enemy tried to resist you, even in the families, and where there was just such a lot of betrayal, God is saying, I'm removing that from you and I'm setting you up to receive everything I have promised you, even in your quiet time. When people were despised, when people looked at you and said, ah, God's not going to use them. God says, you are my hidden chosen two that I will use in this hour to glorify my name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. So you just receive that. I really know this is your season. So this morning when Anton said to me that Zoe and her husband is coming, I said, Lord Jesus, thank you. And the Holy Spirit just started speaking to me. And I really felt that the Lord said, I'm removing everything that was old of the two of you. And I'm bringing you into a new place, new, um, really relaunching the two of you into a new area of ministry, says the Father. All right. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Um, and then Vanessa, is it you? You said it's your cousin. Your nephew. Are you guys married? Are the two? No, no, just friends. Okay, so I'm just, I just want to check. Okay, and the Holy Spirit showed me that there's been a spirit of poverty, sir, after you. And it's been, everything has been a struggle, but yet you felt that, Lord, I don't understand. Why can I not move into the fullness? And the Holy Spirit said, my son, I have called you to be a millionaire. The Lord said, I have called you to create wealth, and you've got a brilliant mind, but something always tries to stop you when it's your time to step into the new season. And the Lord says, first, I want to come and I want to heal your heart because there's been a lot of betrayals and there's been a lot of things and the Holy Spirit says I want to come and I want to pull you closer to me and many of the trials and the tribulations that you've been going through was really just to get your attention and the Lord says I need to tell you he's not against you he's for you and you've been in your mind having some serious thoughts about God and about God's greatness and about God's power and that's nothing negative it's really because of where you come from and the Lord is saying but in this season my son as you reach out to me I want to show you my glory and the Lord says I'm going to reposition you and I have placed upon your life an anointing to create wealth and the Lord says in this season I'm going to remove the reproach that even came from your father and the Lord says I'm restoring your heart and I'm healing your heart and I'm going to bring you into a place where someone will take their arm around you and they will teach you my way but also teach you about business because God says there's an incredible business call upon your life does it make sense to you okay but I see that as I was sitting there I saw you in car accidents and I saw that there's been some accidents you know what I'm talking about in your life and that the Holy Spirit said to me and I just really need to package it nicely that you understand it is that there in your, in your bloodline I see has been something that has been attacking the health of the men, but also has caused a lot of accidents and freak accidents. And this is a spirit of death that tried to come even when you were born, ask your mom to try to come and take you out. But the Holy Spirit is saying, because you are here, we're coming against the spirit of death because it's the spirit of death that tried to prevent you every time it's time for you to get the right job there's a disconnection and you can't step into the right job. Am I right? And even to a place where you felt you had a dream about death and the Lord is saying he's canceling the power of the spirit of death. That's a generational spirit that tried to mark you to say that nothing will work out. I break the power of that spirit and the Holy Spirit is saying from tonight on things will start shifting, things will start changing and that you will come into the divine plans of the Lord. So just lift up your hands. Just lift up your hands. Will you just come into agreement with me? Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I come against a strong man coming from his father's side and from his mother's side that's stopping him from stepping into the greatness of the power that the Holy Spirit wants to release over him. That's stopping him from stepping into the divine plan that you have for him. I take authority over that strong man of death and I say tonight, your power is broken over that young man's life. I say you will let his job go, you will let his calling go, you will let his destiny go. 
in the name of Jesus, I break him out. And tonight, Jesus, I ask now that every destiny demon that has been assigned to kill his destiny, I bind them and I fire them. And I say tonight, Jesus, let the plan of the Lord, let the word of the Lord, that which heaven has established for him right now, that was written in his book of life, let that come into fulfillment. I call the angels of destiny to connect him. I call the angels of destiny to connect him with his wife, to connect him with his job, to connect him, Father, with a right spiritual father that will be able to mentor him and take him into this next place. Thank you, Jesus, that as he's sitting right now, I release the liquid love of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I release it over him. Father, he has never experienced a true touch of Jesus, an authentic touch, Jesus. Will you just come and release an authentic touch of the Father? Just release that. Just release that. Just release that. Just release. Thank you, Holy Spirit. That angels of awakening will awaken his heart so that he will respond to your voice in this hour. And we just thank you for that. In Jesus' mighty name. And the Holy Spirit is saying there's a new opportunity coming for you. And you will know this is a God opportunity because there will be an older man that will come and say, let me show you the ropes. Let me show you the ropes. And Lord says, this man you will be able to trust. All right. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. One last word. So, Daniel, while we've got you with us, let me just prophesy over you. Thank you, Jesus. And the Lord is saying, my son, I've given you a generational mantle to speak to the lost and to speak to the poor. And God is saying, but the very lost and the very poor, it's like a spirit of poverty that's been coming against your generation, has been trying to fight you. But the Lord is saying tonight, I'm breaking you out. And God is saying, you are coming into a season where I first of all want to restore uh, um, um, your relation. Um, I literally saw the Lord restoring houses to you. And I felt that there was houses that was lost in your family line and stuff that was lost. And God is saying, I'm bringing you into a season of divine recovery, recovery of that which was lost in the previous season. And God is saying, because of this anointing that you carry, God is saying that which the enemy has stolen, and even from your grandfather and your own father, God is saying, I'm bringing you back. I'm bringing it back to you. And there is a spirit of sickness that tried to come and attack the woman in the bloodline. And the Lord is saying, I'm just breaking that off you. The Lord is saying, I'm breaking it off you. You shall no longer carry any mark of sickness on your body. And even where the enemy tried to attack your own health, God is saying, I'm breaking you out. And the Lord is saying, my son, this is the hour that you will meet me face to face. For you will carry a different kind of revival fire. The Lord says, listen to me, Daniel. God says, do not monitor yourself. Uh, do not um, um, mirror yourself after men, but mirror yourself after God. Because I believe there is currently an attack on you to mirror yourself after men. But God says, the anointing that I've placed upon you is not an anointing that will be mirrored by men. It's an anointing that comes from the Father. And God says, this anointing will carry so much revival power that the moment you step your foot onto the land, the revival will start even before before you got onto the tent. The revival will start and God says, there where the enemy thought he can stop your grandfather, where the enemy thought he can stop your dad, God says, you will come and you will move into those territories and you will move in with fire and with the miracle working power of the Holy Spirit. And the Lord says, your father and your grandfather has laid down their lives for the kingdom. And God says, but now those, the, the, the mantles that they've literally lied down, I'm picking it up and I'm remantling you in the season. And a mantle of power, a mantle of my fire, and a mantle for the miraculous, says the Lord. And God says there will be a recovery of property. There will be a recovery of that which the enemy stolen. And then when I was standing there, the Holy Spirit said to me, I'm opening up you, the uh, Europe for you. And I especially felt that the Lord said, you've been putting your focus on Africa, but God says, I'm putting your focus on Europe. I'm taking you to Europe. And God is saying, even the Ukraine shall open their doors. And yes, there's war, but God says, your parents have put many tears down and I see that the Lord is saying I'm going to use you to see how the fruits of what they've labored for will come to you in the season.
season. The Lord says, you take Ukraine as an inheritance for you, for this is my season for you to come into the greatness. And the Lord says, I'm going to even restore your platform in this hour. And the Lord says, people will know that this is a man of power because he mirrors what the Father is saying. And I thank you, Lord, that no man will bring him into the place of greatness, but only God will. Therefore, every counterfeit father that wants to step into his life, I cancel their assignment. But I thank you, Jesus, that you will lead him. And the spirit of poverty that has been ravaging in the family line, that has brought severe poverty, I stand here as a prophet and I cancel your assignment. I say you will no longer steal from him. You will no longer steal from his wife. And you will. your power is broken. And I thank you, Jesus, that there will be a shift and there will be a transferring. And the Lord says, I'm going to give you a house. I don't know if you've got a house in South Africa, but I saw a house in South Africa. I saw a house in Europe and then I see a house in America. And I don't know exactly what the connection is, but God says there'll be many houses for the season of intense traveling is only starting now. And God says, don't you worry about how you're going to get everything together. God says there's a new set of angels that will be released for you for Europe. And Europe will open its doors for you. Europe will invite you. God says, Europe is your seed. This is your season for Europe. And God says, you will be ministering in many nations in Europe. And God says, it is your time now to see my glory being poured out and for you to cause an awakening in Europe. And we just release that word over you. So Father, we just want to thank you for that. Father, we thank you now tonight, Lord, that after tonight's word, Father, we want to ask tonight, Jesus, that you will come and that you'll cover every prophetic word that was spoken over every person's life, that you'll cover the word of the Lord. And we just thank you for this. And we seal every prophetic word and we put it in the incubator of heaven until it's time of the fruition. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you very much, everyone. That's all that we've got time for. Until next time, amen.